party. <laughs> Yo. Uh, I make. I want to make this video, guys. And yes, I'm rocking the Trump hat. Um, I do support Donald Trump. <clears throat> Not gonna lie. I don't want to get too political on this page, but this video, I am getting political with it because I want to talk about uh, the implications of this election and your portfolio. Okay. And this is just uh, based off Gary Gensler. Okay. I'm not even talking about taxes or none of that. Um, but that's another major reason that you should probably want to be more siding with Donald Trump, especially if you want to be a millionaire, you know, and you don't want to give them 44% of your gains. No, who wants to do that, buddy? I, I know I don't. Anybody in here want to give half your gains away? You want to give half your gains away, bruh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't think so. Let me, let me start. Let me kick it off with reading this right here. Trump has a pro cryptocurrency platform, while Harris chases the crypto vote. I'm not even gonna read this. I just wanted to read that headline because it's so true. Um, and here we go. I'm going to pull up some things of the SEC has been doing over the last four years. It's ridiculous. We can actually look at how many companies they've sued. And to think they're crypto friendly is just fucking absurd. This was today. This was today, my boy. What? Just in. SEC says crypto mining devices are securities. <laughs> oh my god, again with this shit, man. Again with this shit. Gary Gensler says everything is a security. You're a security. Every security. Uh, oh, I have to protect the investor. Oh, oh, oh. Bro. Have several seats with their bullshit, buddy. Uh, let me talk about this. Oh, yeah. And another thing they did. I think this was today or yesterday. SEC pushes back decision to open up options trading on spot Ethereum ETFs. Okay. What? How is this crypto friendly? How is any of this crypto friendly, you know? And even other commissioners in the SEC are saying this. One of the top officials at the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission thinks the regulator needs to change course in terms of the way it approaches crypto. SEC Commissioner Mark Yuta tells Fox Business that hasn't laid out adequate rules to spur innovation in the sector. And they don't. All Gary Gensler does is rule... <laughs> he just makes shit up as he goes, and he just sues people and makes them comply you know it's not right and um i'm gonna play well before i get to that let me just go on this i went on the sec's website and this is a these are all the companies let me get my thing out the way here these are all the companies that the sec has sued and these are look at this this is the third of uh you know this is all this is recent 2024. Look at these. Novatech, Nader, Consistent Software. You know, what is all this stuff? Sellwell, Rockwell Capital Management, Kraken, SafeMoon, SEC versus blah, blah, blah. Everybody, you know? Where's the one I saw Quant Stamp on here somewhere? That's the one I lost some money in that one. Quant Stamp. From October to November 17th, Quant Stamp offered and sold crypto asset securities to fund development. See, they just keep saying, they, they all they say is, oh, it's securities, unregistered securities, unregistered securities. Look at all these people they sued. I can't make this shit up, guys. I am not making none of this information up. You can go on the SEC's website and look at this. BlockFi, blah, 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 blah. I keep going down. This is in 2021. Hundreds. Hundreds of fucking companies, guys. This is fucking absurd. And they say they're crypto friendly. You know? <laughs> I just want to post this information for you guys to make you more educated and making your decisions for, you know, what you think the future of your financial wellness is going to be. Because this is directly going to affect it. Look at look at what they're doing. They need not keep doing this. Holy shit, it's a lot of companies, you know? Oh my god. I didn't even realize it was that many guys. They've been suing almost everybody in the fucking sector. This is absurd. And they want to give him a raise. The U.S. Treasury Secretary, these Democrats, it's not right. Um, and also, here's something I went on their website, and this was an article, let's see, what is past and prologue, enforcing federal security laws in the age of crypto? This was posted July of 2024, 
and I just was reading some of it, and this caught my attention. I'm just going to read this to you. It's going to, it pisses me off, just how they think of the space. Against this backdrop, the major question is, for us is, are investors being hurt within our remit? If the answer is yes, then we must act, and we must do so with a sense of urgency. And increasingly, the answer to that question has been yes. The current turmoil in the crypto markets is taking a real toll on everyday Americans. According to one survey, approximately 16% of U.S. adults have invested, traded, or used crypto. And among that group, approximately 46% report their investments have done worse than they expected. While some of this may be the result of natural market forces, some of it is certainly due to fraud and other unlawful activity. Hmm. You know, maybe it's fucking Gary Gensler suing all these companies. Maybe that's why people are getting wrecked. You know, kind of like me. I lost a lot of money in Quant Stamp, dude. It's not cool. Okay, let me scroll down a little bit. Let me give you an overview of the type of activity we are encountering because it's quite often left out of conversations like the ones you will have at this conference. To date, the SEC has charged many issuers with failing to register initial coin offerings. I just showed you that. They sued so many companies, like everybody, as well as their offerings and so-called lend, earn, and staking products, meaning that the offerings lacked required disclosures, disclosures that ensure that investors can make informed investment decisions. SEC also alleged in a number of our actions that certain unregistered crypto offerings are nothing but straight rips, Ponzi schemes, affinity frauds, or other types of scams. <laughs> Guys, you hear how they word the stuff they did? They just think this stuff is a, just a fucking joke, you know? They think it's a fucking joke. They're suing everybody. They don't take it serious. They are not crypto friendly. The Democrats being crypto friendly, they, when they say cri they're crypto friendly, they mean pro central bank digital currency where they have complete control of, over you and your finances. Now, Donald Trump and his administration is pro self-custody Bitcoin, okay? Night and day difference, guys. I need you to understand this. Night and day difference, all right? One wants to control your money. The other one wants to be fucking financially free, you know? Hello. Wake the fuck up, man. And here's another thing I saw. There's a bank, uh, BNY Bank or something. Uh, here's, let me just read some of this. I'm not going to read too much of it. I'm about to wrap it up here in a second, actually. Leaked U.S. government crypto strategy. What it means for Bitcoin in a bold price prediction. All right, so guys, the SEC is wanting to keep Bitcoin. They know it's going to fucking take off, okay? So they are they don't want Coinbase and all these other pe people being the bigger players. So they, they're giving these banks and shit now. They approved... BNY Bank has now been approved to custody Bitcoin. And they waived the SOB 121, which means they have to hold the one-to-one -one assets of whatever their crypto that they're holding for their clients. So, I, you know, this is bullish. It's bullish to me. Like here, SOB 121. Required banks to hold the same amount in cash reserves with the value of the cryptocurrency they're holding for clients. An enormous burden that kept many banks on the sidelines. However, BNY Mellon's exemption from this rule signals a shift in regulatory attitudes, clearing the path for more traditional banks to enter the crypto space. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. With that being said, I'm getting off here, boys. I just wanted to make this video because it's just getting on my nerves. And I do want to end it with a clip of this, uh, hold on, this clip right here. This dude grilling Gensler, grilling him. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Gensler, uh, suppose I were to sell you a Yankee ticket and tell you that the Yankee ticket could appreciate in value and could be resold at a profit in the secondary market. And as is the case with all sports tickets, suppose the proceeds from the sale of the Yankee ticket goes toward paying for the Yankee game. By selling you the Yankee ticket, am I entering into an investment contract with you and therefore conducting an unregistered security offering? Um, I appreciate the question. I don't know all the facts and circumstances, but I don't think so. I mean, I, I know where we're headed here, uh, Representative, but uh, I don't think so in that Yankee. So a Yankee ticket is not. And why, why is a Yankee ticket not a security? Well, it's, it's really a question, and the courts have been clear on this, is, is the offer and sale. Specifically with a Yankee ticket, though. What, when, when you're buying a Yankee ticket, what are you purchasing? You're buying... It, it, access to a Yankee game. Is that fair to say? I, I understand. It's been a while since I went okay. to a Yankee game. But fair enough. That's, You're welcome to I a Yankee to, game. I used to live in New York, and my three fair daughters enough. were all born in New so York. So in the Stoner Cats case, uh, 
the creators were selling an NFT that offered access to an animated web series. From the standpoint of federal securities law, is there a legal difference between buying a Yankee ticket that offers you the experience of a Yankee game and buying an NFT that offers you the experience of an animated web series? Uh, again, I don't want to comment on any one specific uh well, the, it was a settlement, a fait accompli. It's not an ongoing litigation. You can comment on it. But it's, it's about how is something offer and sold? Is it offer and sold as an investment contract? Yeah. Are, are individuals looking to a common enterprise anticipating profits okay. based on the well, I'm familiar profits. with the definition. You're avoiding the question. Um. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, guys, I'm getting off here, though. If you get any value, give me like and subscribe to my channel. And, um... Yeah, make informed decisions, guys. Do your homework. Be a free thinker, you know? Don't listen to everything you see, man. When you see, you know, these $25,000 first-time homebuyer things, it sounds good. It's, if it sounds too good to be true, it is. You know, you hear things like that. How do you think the money, where do you think the money comes from, guys? It comes from us. You know, they print the money to pay for this shit. Do the math. There's probably 5 to 10 million first-time homebuyers annually. Multiply that by 25 million, that's Ashton, not it's billions on billions. And that's coming out of taxpayer dollars. And it's going to inflate the housing market to the point where that 25,000 is useless. The 25,000 they printed just inflated the economy so bad, it basically defeats the purpose of them even doing it in the first place. But these people, these low IQ, low income people, I mean, I'm low income and I'm smart enough to figure a way out of this shit because I did my homework. This shit didn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense still. Like they're lying about jobs numbers and stuff. I know they're lying because I'm, right now I'm unemployed. And I've put in so many applications, hundreds, hundreds. And these bullshit carpenter jobs and these stupid maintenance jobs and stuff. There's like five, 600 people. There's some of them that have been, I saw one that had 1,700 applicants. That sounds like a fucking recession to me. If I'm competing in the labor market for regular construction labor jobs, Five, six hundred, seventeen hundred motherfuckers for one job. Like, come on, man. Somebody's lying about job numbers. That's why they cut the, the Fed cut uh, the rates by fifty basis points because they know shit's fucked. That's why they're cutting aggressively. Um, it kind of concerns me if we don't get a Trump victory. Um, where this country is going to go in the next four years is not going to be good, boys. You know. If you agree, you want to talk about it, you know, drop a comment. Let's chat about it. I like discussing stuff like this, you know. It doesn't always have to be about crypto. And this is about crypto, but it's bigger than that sometimes, you know. But, yeah, if you get any value, like, and subscribe to my channel. Hold down the fort, boys.